What's up everybody, my name is Austin Haney and I wanna welcome you to video number three of five in the Schoology tutorials that we're doing today. We've already looked at how to create an account on Schoology and also how to get your class organized. So in this video, we're gonna look at how to add materials to your class once you've created it. So if you're following along with this video with your own class on Schoology, what you're gonna to need to do is to go to your courses page and in whatever course you're working on at that time, click on the folder that we've already created. And when you click on that folder, you'll see this button that says add materials. And it gives you eight different options. You can, well, add another folder, but you can also add an assignment, add a test or quiz, add an assessment, a file, a discussion, a page, a media album, or a package. And you can also import um, things from your resources. So eight different options, but out of those eight, I think there's only four that will be useful to you. Okay, and those four are gonna be the assignment, the assessment, the file, and the discussion. So we're gonna go through those one by one. I'm gonna show you how to create uh, those different assignments and then also like the uses for each one. So let's start with the assignment. Now you're gonna use the assignments page anytime you want students to turn something into you as a file. So this could be an audio file, it could be a video file, it could be a link, um, it could also be a PDF or a PowerPoint or a Word document, any type of file, you're gonna use the assignment feature to get them to turn it into you. So as you're setting it up, uh, you can just title your assignment. Um, I'm gonna just use something random exam PPT. For the description, you're probably gonna wanna type the instructions for your assignment, so you can do that. Um, you're gonna put in a due date. It's pretty self-explanatory for when you want it to be due. Uh, you can also put in a time, and you can give it a point value, however many points uh, you want this assignment to be worth. For your category, uh, when you are creating your first assignment, it's gonna have everything in this ungraded category. What I recommend you do is to think at the beginning of your semester, how do I want to weight my different grades? So do I want a homework grade, an attendance grade, a participation grade, an exam grade, a quiz grade? Do I want many different things? Or maybe you just want a participation grade and an exam grade. Um, go ahead and think about those. And for each class that you're um, gonna be teaching, you should go ahead and create the different categories for the grades that you would like. So I already created one for exams. I probably won't use this as an exam, but I'm just giving you an example. Um, you can set a grading period. I usually skip that. Um, and then you can look at the scale or the rubric. Now this is something that I find that Schoology just does such a good job at. Um, so when I first started on Schoology, I was just using the numeric rubric and I would give my students like a 97 or a 98 or a 86 or whatever like that. Um, you can also use the um, alphabetical rubric, we'll call it. I'm not sure the correct word for that, but basically you can give them something from an A plus all the way to an F. But what I like the best is to use this create new function. And what that allows you to do is you can create your own rubric, you can title it, and you can create the different criteria that you want for your students. And what's super nice is you can give exact descriptions um, for every different thing that you're gonna be assessing them on in this assignment. And I'm just gonna create a few criteria. I'm not gonna label them all right now because that would take too long. I'll just give them a title, one, two, three. So these are the things we're talking about um, and we're gonna call it assignment rubric, okay? So I just labeled them kind of random, but I just created this rubric. And uh, I'll show you what you can do with that in just a minute. And then you're you have some options down at the bottom before you submit your rubric or create it. So you can individually assign this if you wanna only assign it to a certain group of students or a certain individual student. Um, you can lock it. What this means is uh, your submission deadlines, students will not be able to submit it past the deadline. Um, if you enable the submissions enabled, very simply, it allows students to submit it. Uh, publishing it, if you're not ready to show the students the assignment, you can unpublish it or publish it. Um, the grading statistics, this will show the students some information about um, how they did and how other students did on the assignment. Uh, this comments enabled function, this is one function I recommend disabling 
um, because I've had some students in the past accidentally submit their assignment in the comment section rather than where they're actually supposed to submit the assignment. Uh, so I recommend disabling that. And then the copy to courses, uh, if you're teaching multiple sections or multiple courses that are gonna be using this, I recommend highlighting that. And what's cool is as you click to add it to another course, you can change the due date if you would like, you can change the category that it's in, um, and you can also um, change the rubric if you ha happen to wanna change the rubric for another course. So that's how you create an assignment. So now I wanna show you an assignment that I had my students do last semester and show you exactly what it looks like from the teacher point of view. So I had my students turn in a PowerPoint as well as a video link where they were kind of explaining that PowerPoint to me. And this is how it looks on my screen. What I love about Schoology is that there's no need for you to download any type of standard documents that your students send you. So if it's a PowerPoint, a PDF, or even like a Word document, it will like show itself beautifully in Schoology. What I did find is that sometimes if my students added video within their PowerPoint, or if there were some weird uh, fonts and things like that they were using, sometimes that would mess it up. Also if the file size was really big, and so in those situations, I would get my students to upload their um, PowerPoints as PDF documents, and that seemed to clear up all of the issues. Another thing, um, I'll explain this more in my student video about how to submit your work, but I always got my students to type in their name, uh, their video link, and any password they had to that video uh, as they were typing in their information um, to submit their assignment. And that just made my job so much easier because as soon as I opened their assignment, I could click on the link, I could type in the password that they sent me and know exactly who I was um, entering this grade for. But the reason I really wanted to show you this is actually the grading feature. So earlier we created our own custom rubric and we didn't really fill it out great, but I wanna show you a rubric that I created last semester. And these were the different criteria that I was grading my students on. And what's nice is as you're using these custom rubrics, you can simply go to the criteria that you've assigned and click on whatever level of proficiency or mastery uh, you believe your student met that criteria at, and it automatically populates the student's points for that assignment. What's also nice is on the right-hand side of the screen, there's a little area where you can type some personal feedback or comment to the students, and you can tell them exactly what they did well and maybe something that they could improve on for each section of the feedback. The second type of material that we're gonna talk about is an assessment. And you may be wondering, why did I choose to talk about assessments rather than tests and quizzes? Well, I looked at Schoology some, and basically it seems like tests and quizzes and assessments are actually the same thing. It's just that assessments have a little bit better functionality, and in my opinion, they look a little prettier. Uh, so if you find out that there's actually a difference that I don't know about, leave me a comment down below. But for now, I'm just gonna show you assessments and what they can do. So when you start, you're gonna see a page like this, and it's gonna give you options for setup, questions, grading, um, and tracking the student's live progress and reporting that progress. Um, so what you can do is when you first open it, you can type any instructions you have for your students and then go through this little questionnaire um, that just basically helps set up the assessment with the tools that you want it to have. Um, you can set a time limit for your students. You can limit or unlimit the number of attempts they have, all that kind of good stuff. Then you're gonna go over to your questions and this is where you're actually gonna build the assessment. What I love is that there's several different question types. There's multiple choice, true false, matching, ordering, fill in the blank, short answer, and even audio and video options where the students have to record themselves uh, speaking or doing whatever in audio or video format. So I've already asked a few like little simple questions. So what I'm gonna do is click on this preview button and you'll just see what it looks like uh, from a student point of view. So this says, sample assessment, you have made zero of one attempts, you have one attempt remaining, start new attempt. And I'm not gonna actually, well I'll try to answer a few of these and show you. Um, so this is simple, what color was my shirt in the video? Uh, we know it was blue. Next, um, my teacher is from America. True, okay. We're gonna keep going. This is the matching example. So imagine that I gave the students a little bit of information about me. Um, and they needed to know number seven. I think that is the number of people in Mr. Haney's family. 23, maybe that is Mr. Haney's age. The number of, or number three might be the number of years Mr. Haney's been teaching in China. 
Number 14, maybe that's the number I wore when I played baseball. Okay, so these might be things that I talked about in the video or something like that. Again, this is just an example. And one thing, if you're thinking, wow, that was too straightforward, you can randomize uh, the order of the different answers and that should help. This is an example of just ranking. You can get the students to move um, items around and rank them in order from like least to greatest or however you have it. Um, this is one way I'm hoping to use assessments this year is to keep track of student engagement. Maybe I'll have a keyword during the video and they need to type uh, the keyword as like a fill in the blank question. And so just for example, the keyword in this video was English. Okay, maybe I want them to give me a short answer uh, so I can get them to type their favorite hobby like I like baseball. Okay, and what's cool is there is a word limit. So if you wanna make students type a lot or a little or whatever like that, um, they can keep track of their word limit just like that. Um, with the recording the audio, this is really cool. Um, you might have to give the students a little bit of instructions on how to do this, but it's really actually very simple. All they need to do is click this little red button down on the side. And um, my prompt is, how did you choose your English name? Well. I actually didn't choose my English name. My parents chose it for me, okay? All I'd have to do is say something like that, hit the stop button, and um, it's good to go. It will do the rest all by itself. The final thing is uh, the video part. And so let's imagine instead of recording audio, uh, you wanted your students to record a little video and send it to you. Might be cool to like, you know, actually get to see their faces or something like that. Well, you can just have them hit the record button in the same way and it will give them a three, two, one countdown. And then there I am right there. I'm recording a video. Hey guys, how are you? I hope that you're doing well. And again, this is not the video that you send them. This is the video that they will send you. But what's really neat is there's also options to add uh, video, but also pictures and audio into your um, question as well as into your answers. So if you wanna spice up your test and not just make it all like reading and writing, uh, adding video and audio is a functionality um, as you're creating assessments. And I encourage you to try it out. All right, so the students will hit stop and uh, they'll be able to play their video and see it if they wanna see themselves and make sure they look pretty. Um, over here on the right, there's just a few things. Uh, the students can review their answers. Um, they can uh, flag something, like if they don't know it, uh, it will give you a little notification to maybe go over that. Um, and they can also make it full screen. So we're gonna click review, make sure we've answered all the questions, hit finish, and um, it'll say that's all. So what's really cool is you can set some options on there for the students to see their correct answers, see the answers they got wrong. You can give them multiple attempts. There's all sorts of things that you can do in the assessments. Um, but I think that this is a really, really useful tool. And it might be great for like big things like test and like summative assessments that we think of but also just making sure that your students are following along in the class and um, understanding the material that you're teaching them, using something like these assessments could go a long way. The final two things that I wanna show you is adding a file and also creating a discussion. So we're gonna do that together real quick. The adding a file is really easy. Um, if you wanna add a file, you just click add a file and then add a file. And the only limitation is the files cannot exceed 512 megabytes. So if you're adding something like really, really big, I recommend that you send it as a link rather than a file. That's really easy to do. All you need to do is type in your URL. You can title it if you would like. And um, anyway, choose the different options that it lists below. And then finally, um, the last thing that we're gonna talk about in this video is just adding a discussion. So this is like your typical online class, you're adding a discussion board. Um, so you can title your discussion, we'll title it discussion board one, okay? You can give your students some instructions as far as like what would you like them to do um, during this discussion board. You can give them a due date as well as a time for it to be due. Um, you can enable grading, you're probably gonna wanna do that. Set a category for uh, what it's for. You can also um, create a rubric. And what's really neat about this is you only need to create a rubric one time and it's good for all your discussion boards. Um, so I think that's a really helpful feature. I recommend you keep your rubrics like pretty simple for something like discussion boards. 
um, but then you're gonna go ahead and click create. And yes, it might take a little bit of explaining to your students on exactly what you wanna do in these discussion boards, but once you have it set up, it should be super easy to read through what your students have posted, to get them to collaborate with other students, and uh, it's actually super easy to grade using these discussion boards as well. So those are the main types of materials that I think you'll be using in Schoology. But there's one last thing that I wanna show you before we end this video. And to show you, you need to go back to your courses in the class folder that we created, and if you go to this little editing icon, there's a new option available for you and it's called student completion. Now, what you can do is if you click on this, you can set requirements for your students and things that they must do in order to complete like this module or this week's of class. So let me show you, you can add a requirement and then let's say for the sample assessment, um, the student must um, score at least a 90. So they have to take this test until they score at least a 90. Um, maybe for the exam PowerPoint, they need to, and this, is, this was our assignment they created, maybe they just need to make a submission. And then maybe for the discussion board, they need to um, post a comment or reply. So what we're doing is we're creating these little requirements and then as the students are going through our class week to week, they can know exactly what they have done and exactly what they still need to do in order to finish the class for that week. And once they finish, they'll get the little green check mark and they can move on to the next week. All right, that's all for this video. I hope that you found the content in here super, super helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe down below so you don't miss any new videos that are coming out. And what I encourage you to do is to start experimenting with this. Maybe you've already built some materials in the past. Well, start trying to integrate those materials with Schoology. Take a quiz that you used last semester and put it on Schoology. And uh, just figure out how to use the platform so that you can be better prepared to teach this semester. All right, that's all for this video. See you later, guys.